here are some value investing strategies for beginners. Go ahead, Paul. So first, what is value investing? In a very simple and easy way, it's about buying a dollar for much lower than a dollar. Easier said than done, Mm -hmm. of course, right? So what caused that to happen? Well, guys, in the world of investing, whether it's stocks, bonds, real estate, anything, it's a bunch of perception out there. If people perceive this glittery object, company A or real estate A, and they love it, what's going to happen to the price? Goes up. It goes up. Housing market, houses nowadays. Stocks nowadays. Sure, you're right. People love them, they go up in price. When people don't love something, what happens to the price? Goes down. People fall out of favor with it. Prime example, any stock market crash. You look at any, look at COVID. From February 19th of 2000 to March 23rd of 2000, stocks fell 40%. Mm. You telling me they really lost 40, that the companies intrinsically lost 40% of their value in one month and then shot right back up again? No, of course not. We all got scared. We sold off. Our perception of the future changed and we all got scared. Exactly, Seth. Mm -hmm. So what's the value investor's job? The value investor's goal and their job is to take away all the fear, take as much fear and emotion away and say, what are we looking at here? What are we really buying here? Are we buying something that is dying? Or are people being overly dramatic? The pendulum of emotion swings from right to left, from fear to euphoria. Where are we? Well, we don't always really know. I believe we're here in a lot of assets. During COVID, we were here. We thought the world was shutting down. We thought the world was going to change forever. We thought there's no way we're going back to work. Everything's going to shut down. People are going to be poor. Unemployment went to 18%. All the fear was there. And guess what happened? S&P went to 2190 and then guess what happened? Two years later, here we sit. What is it, 4,600 on the S&P right now? So you're telling me that all of a sudden, all fears went away? Everything, you might sit there and say, yeah, Paul, it did. COVID was handled. Well, guys, when this happened, we had 5,000 cases in the U.S. of COVID. Now we have freaking 500 million in the U.S. That's not really true. But the point is, everybody in this country basically has had COVID. Yeah. So it was a perception issue. And your goal as a value investor is to be strong and say, I don't think this is reality and make a decision based on it. But the part we're not forgetting, Seth, it's not just about buying when things are low. It's about avoiding when things are overpriced and overhyped. Mm -hmm. Because one of the most important aspects of value investing isn't just making great investments. It's avoiding bad investments. If you have money, if you have $100 and you make a bad investment and it falls to 30 you, fought, you lost 70%, right? Yep. But guess what? To go back to 100, you need to make 240% or whatever the number is. It needs to go up by two and a half, three times, whatever the number is, three and a half times. So the percentage gain is, bottom line is it's 240%, whatever the number is. That's the issue with value investing. It's about avoiding these major losses. I always tell people, with my investing strategy, if I just merely match the market, I've probably done it with less risk. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to teach that process of pulling out the emotion and focusing on the numbers and reality and not worrying about about what little Bobby next door thinks about Tesla stock or about any other investment, Bitcoin or anything. Pull Pull out that emotion and say, what am I really buying here? I am buying a present value of all future cash flows. So the question you have to ask yourself is, what is that worth to me? So Paul, when I first met you years ago, I I was my investing strategy was I was just, people told me to buy things I liked and it got me into companies like Amazon, Tesla, and Netflix. Is that a great strategy moving forward? So that's a loaded question because you just mentioned three companies that have skyrocketed in value. And so for me to say it's a terrible strategy sounds dumb, but guess what? Mm -hmm. It's a terrible strategy and here's why. We just explained what value investing was. It's about buying things that are basically out of favor. So if everybody tells you to buy the things you love, Are you like everybody else? I have Netflix. I have a Tesla on order. I buy from Amazon every three seconds. But guess what? Those are three are probably the most overpriced companies I see out there today. I use PayPal every day. Don't I use Square every day? Overpriced. Right. Most of the popular things are overpriced because they're popular. It just makes sense, like I said before. The better strategy would be to find where there's a disconnect. So what's a disconnect? Well, you'll be able to look at For example, finding companies that may be considered a little boring, but still have revenue and profit growth over long. You ever look at Warren Buffett's portfolio? What does he own that's sexy? I mean, he owns Apple, but he's also tripled his, basically his investment in Apple. But he owns Apple. Apart from that, 
Coca Cola, uh, Kraft Heinz. Kraft Heinz. I mean, that's sexy. They make mustard. Verizon. Verizon. Good old Kroger. The Kroger. Growth, the growth stock of Kroger. <laughs> Guys, yeah. these aren't sexy companies. That's one of the things I've learned as a value investor is you find the best deals in non-sexy companies. Does that mean every non-sexy company is a great deal? No, but it's a great starting point. So where do we go? Well, guys, if you watch our videos, we have our eight pillar software. And in our eight pillar software, we can actually select all of our eight pillars and find all the companies that match all eight pillars. And it's all of these right here. This is a great start. Let me start rattling off some companies that you've probably never heard of. United International, Interfor Corporation, Canfor, Atcor, Pfizer, Star Group, Vail, Valet, Perix Resources, Mueller Industries. Does anyone know what these companies are? Besides Pfizer, of course not. No, but that's the point. Ah. Find companies that aren't well known. That Because at the end of the day, what do you care about? You care about this. You care about making the money. Do you care how it happens? I mean, yes, morally, you don't want to be, you know, human trafficking people in order to make money, right? Of course not. No, of course not. But what you want to do is find overlooked investments and overlooked the average retail investor, the average pimply kid next door who has a little bar mitzvah money is going to buy the companies that he thinks are exciting. What are those? The ones he uses every day, Netflix, Apple, all these ones he uses every day. That's what you want to avoid. It's hard to do that. It was very difficult for me to do that. It took a long time of brainwashing myself, but that's the whole point of what we're doing here on this channel. You've come here to learn and we're here to teach a process. And on top of that, we have this community up here of 6,000 people who all talk about it. We're here to help each other do this. Find the non-sexy investments that are selling for reasonable valuations. Once you have found these companies, let's pick on one, let's pick one randomly. Sleep number. Why do we pick sleep number? Seth just bought a sleep number mattress for a yeah. billion dollars. How much did you spend on that mattress? 11,000 on You still have it? I do. I love it. I mean, you're like the second day. You're like, I think I'm going to return it. No, nope, he hasn't I'm returned it. I'm sleeping like a baby now. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the stock price. $120, just $125 just a year ago. And it's now at 51 bucks. So at home, you have two choices. Is this company failing and is the stock is going to the ground? Or is this a great buying opportunity? And this is the disconnect you're talking about. Paul. Well, that's the brilliant question Seth just asked. If I just showed you this chart, what would you think about the company? Dying, dead. Well, things got to be dying. Let's go to the income statement, see how dying it is. Well, in the last year that the stock fell 60 whatever percent, its revenue has gone up from 1.86 billion to 2.18. In the last year when the stock fell 60%, their profit went from 139 million to 153 million. Starting to make sense here. Do you see what I'm saying, guys? Do you see what I'm saying? That's the point. Now, does that mean just because something is growing, you should pay whatever? No. There are still reasonable valuations to, p- to pay for companies. That's why we have the stock analyzer tool here. Then when you find the company you love and you find the company that fits your criteria from a 500 foot view, use a stock analyzer tool because every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. If I told you right now that I want you to give me a dollar per year for the rest of my life, I'm 40, a dollar per year for the rest of my life, what would you pay? What would you, what would you want me to pay you for that? Well, I gotta, you got to calculate some things. I got to calculate some things. How long am I going to be alive? I could live to 100. I could live to 80. I could, live, I could walk out of here today and get hit by a bus, and you wouldn't owe me a dollar. But I'm going to pay you for that right. That's what you're doing with the company. You're paying. When you buy a stock, you're buying the right for its future cash flows. And as a value investor, your goal is to pay as little as possible for that right. Now, when the stock price is falling, you get to buy, it for, you get to buy that right for a lot less. But the hard part is... The stock is falling and you have to sit there and say, am I wrong or am I right? I don't know. Most stocks that are falling are falling for a good reason. But your job is to sit there and pull out the noise. Pull out the noise. As an example, I've been buying Facebook and Alibaba lately. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm just showing the process. The stock has fallen considerably as of late. So somebody would sit there and say, Paul, you're wrong. But I'm in this for the long haul. My theory is... They're selling for reasonable valuations today. And I believe 10 years from now, they'll have more money, be making more revenue and more profit that even justifies today's price. So I'm a buyer of the stock. In the meantime, I have to put up with this kind of stock price. Mm -hmm. I have to put up with volatility. I'm okay with that because I've trained myself. I have a community of people I can go to and talk to about these ideas. But the most important thing in value investing is removing the emotion from seeing the stock price fall and saying, I'm wrong on this. So Paul, you've been investing since you were 
14, 15, 16 years old, you have multiple businesses, you have over $100 million in assets. Did you get this through value investing? Absolutely. That's how I got it. Mm -hmm. And there have been times when my money has gone like this as opposed to like this. But there are other times when it goes like this. And guess what, guys? It goes like this when times are bad. Keep that in mind. Times are best for a value investor when it's bad for everyone else. Imagine a world in which you could sit there and say, I, I embrace bad times. I make more money when times are bad. This year, when the S&P, when the NASDAQ was down 20% at one point, I was up 4%. But last year, when the NASDAQ was up 30%, I was not up 30%. I was up much lower. But that's the whole point of value investing. When times are bad, I manage my downside risk. And that is the goal here. We have all this experience. And guess what? There are multiple ways to skin a cat. But if this makes sense to you, this is your first time watching this video, our channel, watch some others. We have 1,300 videos out there. We do this because we love it. We're not like the other YouTube guys out there who do it because we need to make an income. We do it because I love teaching. I teach at my high school for free. I try to teach at a law school here in Cleveland for free. I like teaching because the process works. And if it speaks to you, we have 1,300 videos and we are going to release more every single week. Find the great companies, patiently wait for a great price. That's value investing. If you want to see more videos, click right here and we'll see you next video.